Hey there, so welcome back. I've got my little clapper down here. I need to do this to sync the audio. Okay, so this time we are gonna talk about ways to start estimating the reliability of a test score without having to develop a separate score or a separate form or having to administer the test once. So deriving this estimate entails an evaluation of the internal consistency of the test items. So logically enough, this is referred to as internal consistency. Um, it's often also called uh, an estimate of inner item consistency. These are basically the same thing. So this time I'm gonna talk about split half reliability, which is kind of like the both basic straightforward kind, as well as Spearman Brown which is kind of a natural consequence that we need to uh, address. Uh, the other internal consistency is alpha, which is really, really important. So please know it. I don't know how to reiterate. No alpha. It's good for you to know. So yeah, let's dive in. Let's dive in. Okay, so um, split half reliability is estimated by obtaining the correlation of two pairs of scores uh, obtained from equivalent halves of a single test administered at once. So it's useful, especially when it's impractical or undesirable to assess reliability at two testing points or to administer a test once because of all those factors related to timing or expense. And the computation is pretty straightforward and we'll walk through the big three steps. But before we get there, I just want to mention that there are tons of different ways to split up the test. You can use first half, last half. You can use odd versus even. You can create item groups and call them testlets, so like subtests. Or you can do it randomly. There are tons of ways to do it, but you do the split once. And so here are the three big steps. So first is you divide the test into your equivalent halves. Then you uh, calculate the Pearson correlation between the scores of the two halves. So then the last step we're going to talk about this one is, is you have to adjust the half test reliability using the Spearman Brown formula. And we will talk about this um, in a little bit, but that's the basic idea. It is fairly straightforward. You cut your test in half, correlate those two halves, and boom, you have a split half reliability. So um, there are a ton of issues with this test, uh, this approach, which is why I have to cover how to fix that limitation in the same module. So um, what's wrong with this test? You have a 20 item test that you've cut in half. So you have made two 10 item tests. First of all, what does this do to reliability? Well, um, it reduces it. And there's another caveat. I want you to think about domain sampling theory. What happens when you cut your test in half? You have half of whatever you thought was representative of your sample, of your domain. So it's less representative and it's less reliable. So here are some big issues and caveats because again, there's more than one way to split this test. Here are some things to just keep in mind. So simply dividing a test in the middle is not recommended because it's likely that this procedure will spuriously raise or lower your reliability coefficient. Uh, different amounts of fatigue from the first half to the second half can impact. So people will be more engaged for the first half. So you'll probably get better performance as well as uh, the second half where they may have mispaced themselves and run out of time or rush through. So Think about where you're splitting it. And you may also have different levels of anxiety. So you may be more anxious at the beginning and then at the end, or it could be the opposite because you realize you've run out of time on a speeded test. So that leads to more anxiety. You also have differences in item difficulty as a function of placement on the test. Some faculty like to put all their easy questions first, put all their hard questions at the end. Some people like to spread them out. It depends. And if you've just kind of randomly thrown them around or clustered them somewhere, your splits will make a difference in your test performance. 
and the correlations. So all of these issues are ones we need to take into account. So one acceptable way is to randomly assign items to either half uh, because in, on average, it'll wash out um, how they work out. Um, just like random, random assignment on average works out to help with causal inference for any individual like administration, it doesn't. So another acceptable way is to split your test along odd or even numbers so that um, you can at least have balance in terms of where in the test folks are. And often this is actually referred to as odd even reliability as kind of like a special case. Um, another way is to split the test by a uh, content. So each half contains items equivalent with respect to content and difficulty. In general, the primary objective of splitting a test in half for the purposes of obtaining a split half reliability estimate is to create what might be called a parallel form, a mini parallel form. Uh, where uh, half of each test is nearly or at least is e nearly equal as humanly possible in format, style, statistics, and all related aspects. That's the idea. So step two is you do a correlation, which hopefully you can do. Please be able to do this. This third step that I already talked earlier about using Spearman Brown is, well, we're going to talk about using Spearman Brown. So Spearman-Brown formula is when you're estimating an entire test based on the reliability of the split half, you need to essentially account for the fact that you have cut your items in half. So what you can do is pop in your one reliability coefficient and then adjust it based on your total item length. So this can be used to estimate the effect of changing the number of items on the test, which is what you've done with Spearman Brown with the split half. And the end result is uh, you get an estimated reliability that's the correlation of the two halves, but with a new length that is proportional to the old length. So for split half, you need to take into account that each of your reliabilities is based on half the test questions. So when you put your values into Spearman Brown, let me actually just pull us up to the next slide because I've included it here. You need to essentially plug in two. Like what is your reliability um, here? Where essentially you have doubled the reliability on top and then divided that by one plus reliability. And that will give you an estimated reliability based on the full length of the test. So usually, but not always, reliability increases for test length. So the Spearman-Brown formula is very useful above and beyond just um, split half. If you are trying to decide how to shorten a test, lengthen a test, what are, what are the implications for reliability if you do that? Because in general, more items makes a test more reliable. Although you have the trade-off with fatigue, so if you go from like one question to a thousand, it's probably not going to be that, the, the cost-benefit there might not be great. So I've got a couple of examples here where um, we can look at a 30-item test of split-half reliability, and so our split-half of reliability was 0.6, just the raw correlation. However, when we pop in our numbers, uh, so 2 times 0.65, divided by one plus two, six, five, uh, is almost 0.8. And almost 0.8 is way better than a reliability of, of 0.6 and a half. So you do need to take into account that you have changed the item length of your testlets to cre calculate your reliability. Because the raw split half correlation is gonna be a gross underestimate of the overall reliability. Yeah, so I've broken down this a little bit more to see what happens if we had uh, Spearman Brown with a test retest reliability of 0.65. And then we've length we then lengthen that test. So here we're not dealing with uh, artificially shortened reliability, but we want to know if we can bump up our test. So if we essentially triple it, which is the number we plug in, um, 
we can see that we'll get a reliability of 0.85, um, or at least an expected reliability of 0.85 here as a function of um, tripling our length. And I know that I have not walked us through each individual step, but that is an exercise for you. And this third one is calculating what happens if you um, cut your test in half. So we have, that, we have a test retest of 0.65, and we started with 30, but 30 is expensive, so we're dropping it in half. What happens? Well, our reliability goes down. It's going to when you have fewer questions. Um, so here, instead of a, a larger number, we are using a fraction. It's a multiplier by of test length. So here it's 0.5, because we are going from 30 to 15. So uh, that's it for Spearman Brown and the first kind of half of reliability. So uh, yeah, so I'll see you in a bit. Bye.